What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scooby Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button over here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. And we're out to do another salvage job today. We got a call from a local company that we do a lot of dive jobs for, such as inspections and things like that. And they had a little mishap where they lost some product that they use for their company, obviously and they lost it in their little private lake area. So we've got to go out, locate this project or the product and try to figure out, are we going to lift it up or are we going to need a crane system or some type of winch system to pull it out? Now the product in question is about $10,000 worth of product and it's very important that they get it back. So that's what we're headed out to do today. Hopefully we'll be successful, but we got to get down the road. We got to get all this gear unloaded. And of course we're going to jump in and see if we can find their stuff for them. But come along with us and we'll see how good we do. All right, guys, so we're just going to jump right into this. Uh, we're just getting ready here, and we are discussing with the staff members or the employees of this company what exactly happened and what we're looking for and how far out it went and just all the details that we need to have a successful search and recovery or salvage, if you will. Um, we're just making sure we're doing gear checks here with each other, making sure everything's good. And I've actually got three divers on this job. we got two primary divers, and we will have a backup diver. Um, it's not necessarily uh, that deep. We, this particular private lake, we dive uh, pretty regularly uh, throughout the year because we do inspections. You've probably seen videos here before where we swim up inside their intake system, which you'll see here directly off to the left of me here shortly. Um, this intake we swim into and we inspect twice a year for them and we'll pump it out and clean it out for them. So we're very, very familiar with where we're at, what we're diving on as far as the, the visibility, the depth, the bottom composition, all that uh, we're very very familiar with it and what we're actually looking for today is two spools of copper this company makes fiber optic cables and things like that and unfortunately they lost two big spools of copper they weigh about 1284 pounds a piece and so we've got to go out if you look close enough you'll see the tracks there in the grass where they roll down the hill we've got to go out locate these two spools and then figure out are we going to use a crane system or a uh, lifting a lift bag to lift them up to get them back to shore as you can probably already we're using some type of crane or a boom truck. This is a local tow company here in the area. We're going to be utilizing their boom truck to uh, help us out. Uh, but here I'm just doing some final gear checks. I'm getting my mask washed out, uh, making sure everything works good, and then we'll conduct our search. On this particular search, we decided instead of doing a jack stay or a circle search or some type of sweeping pattern, that we would just simply drop down on the item. We had a pretty good idea how far out it, it rolled down the hill and out into the water. So we just kind of guesstimated our distance out, and then, of course, two of us dropped down. I think it took us maybe 20 seconds tops, and we come across the, uh, the first spool. 
And both spools were actually within a few feet of each other. So you can hear, you can kind of see the first spool start to come on camera. And it's just a big old roll of coppers, all it is. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is uh, mark it, as we always do. So, of course, we put an SMB on it and mark it. Um, that way it makes it easier when we come back down with rigging to uh, locate it again. But I'm also checking the condition of the spool itself and trying to determine, is it something I can go under and wrap around? Is there a, a hole that goes all the way through the center of the spool can I get a strap or a chain or a cable system through that and so I'm just doing a quick inspection here um, even though the visibility is bad I can still see it well enough to know uh, how I'm going to rig to this now what we decided to do on this particular dive is just use some toe straps so we're going to use some of the same toe straps that we would use for vehicles uh, or boats that have sunk and uh, our backup diver is just going to swim out a toe strap to me and I'm going to run it through the center of the spool and then kind of pull through itself, creating a girth hitch. And that also still gives me something uh, to hook the cable hook to uh, that the wrecker or the boom truck is going to be using as well. So here I'm just simply dropping back down on it. Like I said, that's once again why we mark things so it makes it easier for us. But I'm going to drop down on it, and I'm going to find one of the sides to stick the toe strap through. I'm going to inchworm it all the way through to the other end, then I'm going to bring the two ends together and, of course, create a girth hitch. If you don't know what a girth hitch is, it's just basically where you have two loops or a loop and a working end, and you simply stick one end through the other and then pull tight. That's considered a girth hitch, and it's just a quick way to connect something real quick or to create a loop in a line or a loop in a strap. But basically that's all I'm doing. I'm just inchworming the uh, toe strap through the spool now, and then I'll bring it up, meet the two ends, pull it through, and then use one of those loops as my connection for um, the uh, toe hook as itself. So there, there you can see, I just created a girth hitch, pulled it together, and I'm actually just going to kind of leave it in that position until we can get the tow hook out. Now, I do want to talk temporarily about the tow hook and how we travel through the water with it because it is very heavy. Um, not only is the cable system heavy, but so is the hook, and it can be difficult to tow with it. So let's talk about how we're actually going to get that cable all the way out. Well, if you can't tell, of course, we are going to use a lift bag. And this is something we do a lot on, say, vehicle recovery. Say if it's a pickup truck who is backing his boat into the water and the truck went too far and went down the ramp. Anytime that we have to tow something out, such as a tow hook or a cable in this situation, that tends to be very, very heavy. Instead of us as divers trying to control that and manipulate our buoyancy, all we do is simply hook a lift bag to it. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to take this 100-pound lift bag. I'm going to hook it up to it, put a little bit of air in it, and that allows me to float this cable system or this tow hook out to the object. It makes my life a whole lot easier. It makes things a lot safer for us as divers. And to be honest with you, if you're doing any type of search and recovery, I don't care if you're looking for a cell phone off the end of a dock or maybe you're looking for a fishing rod, you need to have a lift bag. XS Scuba makes some great ones. There are 50 pounds of lift. There's 100 pound lifts. There's several different companies out there that make it. Uh, I carry the Mares version and the XS Scuba versions. This happens to be the dive right version there, and this is a 100 pound bag. And it's just great if you're doing this type of work to have several of these laying around. They're relatively inexpensive. They actually pay for themselves after a couple of recoveries. So as you can see, I'm just going to use it to tow this hook out there. It definitely makes my life a whole lot easier and it makes the salvage job a whole lot safer too because we're not struggling to keep this thing afloat and it just it's just a better way of actually doing it. But we're going to get this towed all the way out there and then of course I will um, hook it up as you can see here. I've got the tow strap and I'm going to hook it up to the uh, tow hook at the same time. Now basically all I'm going to do just to make it easy, I'm going to take the tow hook, I'm going to go through the loop of the toe strap and since the hook is such a large hook instead of just hooking it on like that and, and risking it popping off I'm gonna run the toe hook all the way through the uh, ring itself and then hook back to the toe strap once again so we'll call it a wrap and a lock if you will I'm gonna wrap all the way through the system once and then I'm lock it in by hooking up and that way if the hook was to come off uh, while the tow truck was pulling it in it still has that complete wrap around that's gonna uh, basically be twisted on itself and not gonna allow it to come disconnected 
depending on what I'm towing up, if it's going to be a vehicle or something a little bit heavier than what this is, uh, then I may do it a little bit different. But for the purpose of what we're doing, this is a whole lot easier just to do it this way. So now that we got everything hooked up, the tow company is actually going to start winching it in. Uh, you can start to see the lift bag uh, break the surface of the water there. You'll see those bubbles there behind the bag. That's actually the spool dragging through the mud and it's starting or creating cavitations, which is allowing air to come up to the surface. Uh, this is normally the time you drag something through the bottom like that. But he's going to give us just a second to get out of the water here and to get out of the way of that cable system. Um, you never want to be behind the tension of that cable. In the unlikelihood event that cable does snap, you want to be completely away from it. So the tow company is giving us just a second here to get out of the way. And then, of course, we'll pan the camera around and you'll see that. A spool of copper start to come into play. We've actually got another one. We're going to take a quick break, but we've got another one that we're going to go get um, and then try to get finished up. All right, guys, so we're back at the shop now, and as you can see, we were very successful today. Not only were we able to locate the spools of copper, we were also able to retrieve it, and with the help of the local uh, tow company, it made our job a lot easier. Those bags that you saw in the beginning of the video, we didn't even have to use them, which was a great thing for us, because all we had to do was go down, search for it, hook up, and then let the record company pull them out. But if you like search and recovery videos or you've got any questions on search and recovery work or salvage work, please put it down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer it the best I can. Guys, if you like this video or if you found it helpful, maybe you even learned something from it, do me a big favor. Hit that thumbs up button for me and definitely share it as well. Guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.